four. You know, I made the obvious Arkham Asylum joke with uh, Arkham last time, but I think Looks like we have maybe Arkham Horror movies. would be a better reference to do. Is that so? A human. A woman. I'm afraid I should ask the uninvited one to leave. That is what you want. Actually, I happen to be acquainted with that woman. And that's why you don't get your tattoos from the old gods. But yeah, super brief scene to get us introduced to this next mission. Mission 4, the uninvited one. Find the key to the stars. Oh boy, this mission. Not gonna lie, not a huge fan of it. It also doesn't help as we're using Royal Guard. Royal Guard is a style that's based on really knowing the game and being very good, which I am not. See, you can block attacks to reduce damage. If you block them with perfect timing, you take no damage. And the more your timing is off, the more damage you'll take. But it'll still be reduced. And then you can build up energy and release it in one big... Uh, burst of energy, more or less. Alright, we're not going to buy any energy, or any items, or actions, or anything. We're just going to dive right in. So, welcome to Temeniguru. As you can see, there's a door on fire, because it's just that kind of place. Also, I hate this room. Because it is very easy to just sort of get disoriented or forget where you're going. Luckily, they do kind of guide you with these red orbs to try and point you in the right direction. But, oh man. It's very easy to accidentally go around in circles trying to remember where you're supposed to go. Anyways, let me demonstrate your oil guard here. That's a perfect guard. You can tell by the big shing that happens when you finish it. Let me see if I can demonstrate. Okay, that was the release. I, I timed it wrong, so I took a little damage, but if you can time it perfectly when you do that, you'll just instantly teleport to the other side of them and do a huge chunk of damage. It's pretty awesome. Anyways, this room... This is one of the rooms that really sucks in this mission, and I don't like it. Reason being... These fuckers. Again, these are called Enigmas, and they're basically archers, and they are a pain in the ass. Now I'm mostly just gonna kinda stay back in Ebony and Ivory just to be safe, while they're not able to attack. I'm going to be lame because I took so much stupid damage from these guys in my practice runs. Now I'm getting impatient! Oh, you fucker. By the way, that's not the only ones. There's also a bunch all along the fucking perimeter of the room. So make sure you're taking care of them. What? But also be careful because now lusts have spawned on the bottom. And they are also a pain in the butt. Oh yeah, I have the Cerberus now, don't forget. You were supposed to get hit by that. Ugh. See, this is why I hate this mission. 
because they just decided to spawn three lusts into the room at the same time just to be annoying. What? Why did you target the one over there, not this one? Come on, Dante. See, this is... This is the shit I can't stand in this mission. Alright. That should be the last one. Yeah, there we go. Always one more enigma than you think there is, and it sucks. I hate enigmas. But, we're done with them for this mission, thank god. And we'll just get some royal orbs here. By the way, royal guarding can be used to cancel your current animation. So you can use it to cancel recovery frames on a lot of things. Which is handy to know. It's not something I'll really be using that much because, again, I suck at this game. But, you know, keep that in mind. And I don't feel like waiting for this elevator to finish. So you can just jump. I timed it wrong, but you can just wall jump to end it really early. Alright, these guys. These are gluttonies. Their main thing is that they do not actually attack you with their weapons. Instead, they shoot projectiles. always leap back before doing it, so you'll get a decent warning. Oh, that was cool as hell. And of course we're joined by Sloss because... screw my life. Also, those uh, hands that come out of the door to grab you. Those can also be royal guarded. They're generally a pretty easy thing to guard, too. I'm just messing it up. Right, anyways. So far, so good. We haven't had any major fuck ups. Also, you probably already saw it, but there is a blue orb right up there. So make sure to grab that. And we're back in this room, goody. Have I mentioned how much I don't like this room? I, I think I might have brought it up once in a while. Alright. Yeah, we're just coming around this way. Basically, the thing we need is right below us, but we can't get at it yet. We need something else first. By the way, check this out. If you side roll, it adds to your invincibility frames for a just guard. It makes it super easy. Also, you're not, you're not really supposed to be able to do this. You're supposed to fall down, but... Yeah, we'll play along. <laughs> That's just a neat thing. Alright, this room. Screw this room, too, because of these fuckers. There is a lot of wrath in this room, in this tiny-ass room. I tried to block that. I 
Oh, I hate this room so much. Yep, there's another Wrath, of course. Hey, drop your bomb. Drop your bomb. I said drop your bomb. Or just... whatever. We good? Nope. Of course not. Yep, this, this is another room I fucking hate. But it's over. Now we can go on to a boss I fucking hate. Okay, I don't think... I guess this boss isn't terrible, but... I'm not a huge fan of fighting because it's super annoying. This is the Gigapede. So you'll know, keep coming in and out of these holes. What? Why did I? And it's very hard to stay on him. I can't even, like, be informative with this, because I just suck at this. Oh, you're com oh, you're coming out that side now? Fucker. Yeah, keeping track of him is very annoying. There he is. Come on, get on top of him. Only halfway through. Yeah, those purple orbs, you can you can deflect them back with your weapons. But, again, it kind of requires you to be not terrible at this game to do. Well, let's go. Alright, he's dead. Good Christ. I hate this mission because it reminds me of how much I suck at this game. Alright, anyways. Let's just get our orbs and get out of here. And in here we get a thing we need. The astronomical board. And now it's time to meet... A new character, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, poor Dante can't figure out it's a pull door instead of a push one. All right, door. Tricks. 
will do no good. No good! Zip it, or I'll pierce that big nose. That would be a problem. I love how Dante doesn't take shit from this guy. You've got nothing to lose, right? My name is Jester, and I know a thing or two about this place. That thing there is a power generator for this entire sector. In order to open the door, you need to apply a little something to it first. Do you know what that is, kid? Or is that too difficult for you? <laughs> so, fun fact, um... Apparently, originally, this guy, guy's name was Joker instead of Jester, but, uh... They decided to change that. Actually, I prefer a sword to be my partner. May I have this dance, my lady? This is so annoying. Bingo! That is what the something is. Remember that, kid? Write it down on your hand if you don't trust your head. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't see too much of Jester. You still piss me off, though. All right, and that's mission four. God, I hate this mission. It's just those two rooms really, really suck, and I hate them. But I mean, we still got an A rank in the end, so it all balances out. And hopefully you realize why I should never be trusted to do royal guarding. Ever. Alright. Mission 5 of Devils and Swords. Unleash your might on the Demonic Gatekeepers. Demonic Gatekeepers sounds like a boss fight to me. Alright. And we're switching back over to Trickster style here. I am actually going to power up Ebony and Ivory a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. Then I'm going to buy level 2 Stinger for Rebellion. Alright. And on to do it, let's go. Yeah, that wasn't here before. Skills to show you, never trust clowns. Alright, these guys, these are blood goils. Well, isn't that special? They're a mildly annoying enemy. Five. Alright, blood boils. What? Dante, please. Ugh. I hate this mission. Alright, so the idea with blood goils is if you hit them with your melee attacks, they'll split up to create more blood goils. So instead, you shoot them with your guns to petrify them. You know, when they hold still long enough for you to do that. I hate this mission so much. Okay, th I'm not saying this is a bad mission or anything. I actually enjoy the mission itself, it's just I've been having a bad day. Anyways, let's fight Jester, shall we? 
So this was a fight that was added to the special editions because I guess they knew how much people wanted to fight Jester after all the bullshit he does to ya. General idea, shoot him until he becomes tired. Then just wail on him. Then he'll summon his specter spectral balls. Watch out for the one when it's just above him, because that's kind of a tricky one to dodge. God, I'm just having the worst day. Thankfully, this ball formation is actually pretty simple to dodge. Alright, so he's not too hard. So, I, so I'm sorry if I seem a little uh, low energy during this mission. Uh, it's because I have already failed this mission two times in a row, making it all the way to the end, and just failing at the, like the last seconds. last second, more or less. So that means I've had to go through all of this two times fully. It's very disheartening, and I'm very tired of this mission. But use the astronomical board on this device to further open up the tower. And give us access to... That! I know, it just looks like some shiny thing in the wall. Who knows what the hell it is, right? The important thing also is it gives us access to a jump pad down here, so we don't have to bother navigating the fucking stairs ever again. Thank god. The Majura. It's a decorative spear. Three prongs. I didn't examine it earlier, but there's a thing that needs three prongs put into it. And we're gonna use the Majura on that. Mostly I'm just gonna spend this whole time hating my life, though. Excuse me. Alright, I was gonna surf you, but whatever, asshole. Be that way. Back in the Enigma Room. I know that's not what it's called, but fuck it, it's the Enigma Room. And we'll see how good Dante is with technology. Force will do it usually. I mean, that's how I fix my laptop half the time. Alright, this gives us the soul of Steel Soul, which. Or is it Soul Steel? I wasn't paying attention. But <laughs> you might remember I read an inscription earlier about stealing your soul and you shall cross the abyss or something to that effect. This is what it meant. Get this item, you can cross the abyss. First, we gotta deal with enigmas and shit.
Oop. Nice try, asshole. Alright, Jesus Christ. Can I please finish this mission? That's all I want with my life right now. Might as well kill you for the orbs, fuck it. I don't care, I just, I just want to be done with this. <laughs> uh, two times in a... fuck. Two times in a row. Made it right to the end. Only to fail. Alright. So with the Steel Soul, we can just magically walk across this chasm because... And here's a combat adjudicator for the Cerberus. It only needs an A rank, so nothing hard. Too easy. Oh, don't get cocky yet, Dante. We'll find a way to fuck this up. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know if you guys like pessimistic Dragon Eye here, but I'm just so tired. It's late. I didn't expect it to take this long to do this mission because I did it in my practice runs all right. Anyways, examine this thing for Secret Mission 2, Untouchable. Defeat all enemies while taking no damage. Now you notice how uh, Dante's using the trickster dodge in the preview image there? There's a reason for that. Because the game's gonna have us fight four goddamn enigmas at once. Now do you remember I... Remember I failed immediately? Good times. <sighs> Son of a bitch. Alright, you can repeat a secret mission as many times as you need, so don't worry. Alright, do you remember before I talked about how if an enemy's off screen it won't attack? This is part of the practical application of that. That's not the weapon I meant to use. Oh boy. Because I will be spending a lot of this mission... Oh, not anymore because I'm almost done. Okay, that went pretty fast. In all my usual runs, I just spend most of the time in the air to keep them off screen while I pelt them with Ebony and Ivory, which is why I powered them up in the beginning. But we are good, alright. Now let's take an elevator ride. Now they don't tell you this right away, but this elevator has a strict weight limit of one Dante, four enemies. Any more than that, and it'll come right back down to the ground, so... You can use your shotgun to knock enemies off. Oh boy. You were supposed to fall off there, sir. Okay. Not bad. Uh, okay, we're good. Get off. There we go. That went smoothly. In one of my practice rounds, I ended up falling three times in a row just because I wasn't getting the shotguns to uh, knock them off for some reason. It was very annoying. Anyways, jump on top of this pillar here for some secret orbs. Very nice. Now we'll break some stuff over here before we go to fight the boss. Alright, let's do this. I'll redeem myself this time. I'm feeling good. I won't fall victim to your bullcrap this time, Agni and Rudra. I love this cutscene, by the way. How do I know? We need to come up with something. 
brother, our guest is Sire. Sire? What is Sire? Well, Sire is when... Enough already! How long are you two gonna keep carrying on like this? In case you didn't get the hint, I'll spell it out. Your guest wants to go through. Got it? Yeah, Dante, the door wasn't locked. You probably could could have just walked by them while they were talking. But fuck it, he's all for a challenge. All right, two bosses at once. Let's do this. Now keep your distance once they run to the opposite end of the field, because they'll do this leap attack that is very easy to avoid. Now the general idea of what you're supposed to be doing is you can parry their weapons like the Hell Vanguard back in Mission 2. Whoa, hi. I was not ready to go for that ride, Rudra. I'm sorry. Hey, no charging up over here. It goes for you too. Anyways, you'll notice they can also hurt each other, so keep that in mind. But yeah, while they can uh, be parried like the Hell Vanguard, the timing is way stricter on them, so that's why you won't see me really going for it. Now you might be thinking a good idea is to go after them one at a time. Like kill one, then kill the other, right? That way you're not dealing with two guys at the same time. Well... You're not necessarily wrong. You can do that, but trust me, you don't want to. You want these guys as close to simultaneously dead as you can. Alright, that's red parried, as you can see. It's very open. So now I gotta focus on... Whoa! Blue for a while. And see, they're very smart, too, because you'll notice, as I focus on one, the other will back up to power up his weapon. Now you can do this again. Alright. Oop. And whoop. Oop. I'm dead. Wasn't looking at his counterattack. Alright. Oh boy. Oh boy. There we go. Jesus. Finally. Ugh. I don't have to go through this mission again. Yes, wait. We have been waiting for a long time. Yes, a very long time. For someone stronger than us. Someone who can control us. My name is Agni, and my name is Rudra. You shall take us with you. We can be a great help to you. Okay, but on one condition. What is it? Name it! No, talking! Fair enough. As you wish. <laughs> I love these, these weapon get scenes. Just Dante showing off. 
Of course, that's not the only time they'll be breaking that no-talking rule. But yeah, now we have Agni and Rudra. Very cool weapons. But more importantly, we're done with the mission. Ugh. Having to start over every single time sucked so bad. Yeah, it wasn't very stylish. I don't care. Still an A rank? Yeah, alright. I will take that. Ugh. All right, so let's start off this mission with a big old shout out to Shimomura for the awesomeness we are about to see. she's fighting. I don't think that's an area we ever visit. I don't think. Also, this is impractical as hell, but awesome. Job well done. Six. Mission 6, Family Ties. Clear the trial and forge a new path. This is actually a pretty simple mission. We're going to be using Swordmaster for this one. Which I haven't had a chance to use Swordmaster with Cerberus and, or Agni and Rudra, right? Rudra yet. Sorry, talking is hard. So we're going to do that. In fact, we're going to put away Rebellion temporarily. Rebellion's like my favorite devil arm, but you know, variety's sake and all that. Alright, so Octane and Rudra, we need some abilities for you. Here's their uppercut move. And more powerful forward dash. Sure. Alright. Let's just dive right in, shall we? Let's just dive right okay there. God damn it. For some, for some reason this controller, the left button on the directional pad doesn't work so well. I don't know why. Right. So now we have three devil arms. And you're only allowed to have two at the same time. I can't jump on this thing for some reason. There we go. So anyways, here's the gist of this mission. We need to complete two trials here in order to move on, but if we complete all three, we get a new weapon. So the first one is the Trial of Intelligence, and they give us the old Sphinx riddle of, uh, you know, baby in the morning, man in the afternoon, and all that, so just go four, two, three. it will do. So that's intelligence. Our next trial has to do with technique. And they tell us to avoid all the obstacles. I mean, that sounds simple enough, right? How bad could these obstacles be? Oh, that's how bad they could be. Oof. Alright. So the key to this is 
during a jump, while you're still moving up, you have invincibility. So take advantage of that. Alternatively, you can also use Trickster to uh, just dodge through the spikes, but we're sticking with Swordmaster right now. Alright, so that's two trials down. And of course... We can't just have that be it. Oh, wait, no, there's another one. Never mind. I ta out a little too soon. You ruined my ta-da, goddammit. <laughs> I thought that was all the enemies, goddammit. Okay, so... Uh, that will teach me to start feeling confident in my abilities. But anyways, that's technique done. Now we move on to uh, combat, or warrior or fighting, or whatever the fuck they call this one. This one is the main part of this mission. Because here's the idea, right? You got these two crests here. And some enemies. Okay, simple enough, right? But if any of the crests stop, the enemies go into Devil Trigger. And Devil Triggered enemies, not only do they do more damage, but they are a lot harder to stagger. So we're going to make it a priority right now to get these crests lit up. Now you technically don't have to do this in order to beat the enemies and move on. Technically, you don't have to light the crest, but... But if you don't light them up, you're going to be dealing with Devil-Triggered enemies the entire time. And Devil-Triggered enemies suck, so I would rather not be dealing with them. So we're going to be focusing on making sure all the crests are lit up at all times. Alright. My dad didn't hear that he was winding up. Mark, is that the sound of a rage? Or a wrath, or whatever you were called? Now, Devil Trigger, they take a little longer to blow up, so, yeah. Make sure you're ready. So that's gonna be a pain in the butt. How did that not hit me? Okay. Yeah, quick break to uh, light all these. Don't mind me. Don't mind me.
By the way, in case you can't hear it at the end of that crazy combo, uh, well, throughout, Agni and Rudra are doing hu, 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 hu. But at the end, uh, Dante will shout out Silence, a reference to his uh, no talking quip at the end of the last mission. But yeah, that's that's the uh, essence of fighting. And I had to spend a lot of that fight concentrating, so that's why you weren't getting any commentary for a good chunk of it. Alright, but with all three essences, we can not only move on, but acquire a new power. So let's go see what this new power is. First, one essence does nothing. Two essences. Whew, that laser looks impressive. I wonder if we can have that. Oh, hell yeah, we can. This is the Artemis. I hate this weapon. I'm going to be perfectly blunt. Fuck the Artemis. I am not a fan of it. But I'll get into why next mission. In the meantime, we have a combat adjudicator for Agni and Rudra. This one's just an A rank, so... Nothing big. Alright. Now there's also a bunch of orbs up here. A very annoying to get to spot without air hike. Not impossible to do, just very irritating to try. There we go, another one. There we go, that's all of them. Alright. We're all set to leave. And that's the end of the mission. But we got one more cutscene. Starring our favorite ass-kicking woman. Remember kids, always take a break to reload. You never want to be without ammo in a fight. I kind of wonder what Arkham's teleporting looks like to them. Because we only ever see it in camera cuts. Also, Arkham is very weird. I don't know if you know, notice this. And you go down shooting, of course. So, I mean, why not at that point? Alright, so that's mission six. It's a very straightforward mission. But that fight is brutal. But I mean, still got the A rank in the end, so I'm satisfied with that. I'd rather not try and perfect that fight as much as I can. Like how it takes her a second to realize she's been caught. No wonder the sky looks so funny today. Let me go. And luckily, that's not a real skirt. <laughs> but it would be a waste if you ended up as just a pretty stain. <laughs> and you kind of love how she doesn't even hesitate to just shoot him in the head. Like there's nothing outwardly that will tell you he's a demon or anything. Here I am trying to help you, and you show your thanks by shooting me. Whatever. Do as you please. So he's a demon too. I'm beginning to think I've got rotten luck with women. Oh, don't you know it, Dante. Seven. Right. Mission seven, a chance meeting. 
duel of the demon children. Ooh, demon children. Does that sound like we're finally going to meet Virgil? Better believe it. Alright, so we're switching back to Gunslinger. And I'm going to show off why I hate the Artemis. At least at first. I mean, I guess it's not the worst thing ever, but I'm not a fan of it either way. I'm actually not going to buy anything else. I'm going to save my orbs for the moment. So let's dive right in. Right, so the idea with the Artemis is if you hold down the button, you'll charge up a shot, and then it'll launch a small orb that will then shoot a laser at an enemy. And the more leveled up it is, the more orbs come out. It's stupid. I don't like it. But I'll keep it equipped for right now. Anyway, Secret Mission 3. <coughs> this is a very simple one. All you have to do is stay up in the air for 20 seconds. And our first step to doing this is to lure enemies to this corner. Because they will keep continuously try to jump at you, and you can jump off their heads as they're jumping at you to keep yourself in the air. Now, usually they're way more cooperative than this. Alright, come on. God damn it. Come on. Ah. You know, funnily enough, in the run I had before this, it only took one jump to get this. Now, something else you can do is, um... With Swordmaster, you can also do some uh, aerial moves to prolong you in the air for a couple seconds. But it's not really necessary. There we go. And then the, once the mission's done, immediately all the enemies vanish. But that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple one to do. Alright, and since it's a new mission, these red orbs have respawned, so might as well grab them. And let's go down. Into the Divine Library. Now remember these statues we beat up before? Well, I think it's time for them to beat us up, huh? The goal of this room is just to grab the Aura Halkin Fragment. You technically don't have to fight these guys at all. But I'm gonna... because... Anyways, those guys are the damned pawns. Basically, they're evil chess pieces. And like pawns in chess, they're very simple. They just move a little bit and occasionally attack. But generally, as long as you don't go to the front of them, they won't attack you, so... That's how you deal with them. Anyways, now that we have the Orhalkin Fragment, we can go all the way to the top. And arrive at the pitch black void. This is where Lady fought Arkham and got tossed off the ledge. Mm. 
And now to grab some more orbs that are up here. Which is way more annoying than it needs to be, but got it first try. Funnily enough, the run before this, I it took me so long. I wasn't looking at the time, but it was probably like close to 40 seconds or something to get that. Ugh. Anyway, the thing with the damned pawns is you know exactly when they're going to attack. Because they will have their swords suddenly glow red. So they are very easy enemies to beat when they're alone. The problem is, they are very rarely alone. Excellent. I'm in here for a vital star. I'm gonna try my damnedest to not use. And now it's time for a new enemy. All right, these guys. These are greeds. Here's their deal, right? So they swing these caskets and then summon these spirits. When those spirits hit the ground, they summit, they turn into enemies. So basically, while greeds don't do anything majorly on their own, their danger comes in the fact that if you don't kill them fast, then the fight's just going to get more and more chaotic. Always, 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 always make greeds your first targets whenever you can. It's our first encounter with the Greeds done. Now these ones only summoned more prides. But uh, yeah, later on they can summon even deadlier things. Anyways, from here we get the Siren Shriek, which is used for a door in the main hall. The, a cutscene showed it briefly, but there was a door that was on fire. And we're going to use the Siren Shriek to put it out and go inside. Triple S rank, combat adjudicator for the rebellion. Not too bad. Anyways, the Aura Halkin fragment we got back in the library, this is where it's used. Give us access to this elevator. And this elevator will take us conveniently to the main hall. Eventually. There we go. Alright. And we're gonna take this opportunity to get rid of the Artemis because I don't like it. Honestly, the less I have to use the Artemis, the better, in my opinion. I'm really only ever going to equip it with Gunslinger. 
And even then, at the lower levels, it's not worth it. Later on, it gets some cooler moves, but ugh. Anyways, use the Siren Streak to put this out. I'm assuming it's like a fire grenade kind of situation where you just, like, toss it into the center of the flame. That works. Anyways. Here's a yellow orb. The idea with yellow orbs is, in the mode I'm playing, which is called, well, yellow orb mode, yellow orbs are your continues. If you're out of yellow orbs, you, once you die, it's game over. With a yellow orb, if you die, you can use the yellow orb to restart the room, more or less. And now for this. Giant ball hanging from the ceiling, just break it. Easiest if you just get on top of it and swing. Alright. Now, pick up the crystal skull and prepare for a fight. This is a tough room. Because again, we're dealing with greeds. And these greeds summon lusts. Because I don't hate my life enough right now. So we're just going to try to kill this guy ASAP. How did that miss? Alright. Now we have greeds that summon sloths instead of lusts. And again, keep an eye on the sloths. When you see them roar, that means they're about to attack. And again, we want this guy dead ASAP. The fewer enemies we get, in this fight, the better. Whoop. There we go. Whew. That is a tough fight. Because if you don't take care of those greeds immediately, you are just going to get overwhelmed. But we did it. Thank God. Now we can just go ahead and head back up. Oh, and this is an appropriate time for my cat to start playing with papers. Hey! Hey, stop it! Get out of here! I don't mean to whoop a cat, but I'll, if I have to, I will. Alright, time for another moderately difficult fight. This one's not that bad. Compared to the last room. So at least we have more room to to work with. The main thing is we're also going to be dealing with a Hell Vanguard. Watch out! Oh, it's gonna say watch out for when it summons ripples in the ground or the air. Because that means it's going to 
suddenly pop out of there. Now, thankfully, she'll only do that once per thing right now. There we go. Thankfully, she'll only do that once per thing on this difficulty. But on higher difficulty, she can do it up to like three times in a row. Which isn't that bad when there's only one, but if you get like a room of two of them, it can be a bit of a nightmare. But we're done with this room now. We're actually almost done with the mission, too. We just need to use that crystal skull to give us access to here. And a quick divinity statue to change up our equipment. Just a little bit. I'm just gonna go Rebellion Cerberus for this next part. And... Uh, now nah, we're good. I was considering buying a blue orb too, but... We should be alright. Famous last words, I know, but... There he is. All right, Virgil. It's about time we settled this. I love how it's completely silent, but you got the rain and everything, and it's oh, it's such a cool part. Damn it! Funnily enough, in my practice run, I actually got it to where. Uh, after Dante said break down, it loaded the cutscene. I was trying to do it again, but it didn't work. I love the music for this scene. You showed up. You sure know how to throw a party. No food, no drinks. And the only babe just left. My sincerest apology, brother. I was so eager to see you, I couldn't concentrate on preparations for the bash. Whatever. At any rate, it's been a <laughs> I like how Virgil actually just goes along with it. How about a kiss from your little brother? Or better yet, how about a kiss from this? This is what they call a heartwarming family reunion, eh? You got that right. Alright, it's time to actually fight Virgil. Ah, well. Let's go. Anyways, Virgil, this first fight isn't that bad. This may be fun. Oh, fun. I say that and then I immediately get hit. Anyway, as I was saying. All you really have to do is watch out for when he does moves like that, because they leave him super open. Also that, 
His like little vortex slash thing. Also leaves him pretty open. Really, all you gotta do is just wait for an opening. And watch out for his parries. And ta-da. Yeah, he's not that bad. But what? Wait, what? I didn't... Excuse me? <laughs> I I swear I didn't press the start button. It skipped the cutscene for some reason. Um So anyways, that was mission 8. <laughs> or that was mission 7. <laughs> okay. Hold up. I'll I'll go back and replay the cutscene. Okay, here we go. Apparently this is a bug with the HD collection where if a cutscene fails to load because of a memory leak or something like that, it'll just skip, auto-skip the cutscene. But uh, restarting the console fixed it. Anyways, nice little quick shout out the Shimamura section here. I'm saving my orbs. Oh, that's what you mean. Father? <laughs> I don't have a father. <laughs> I just don't like you. That's all. I didn't call it out during the fight, but as Virgil's health bar gets towards the end, his hair actually goes down. It's the only time you'll see him like this, though. It's the only time they really look like twins, in my opinion. Now, Angie cut his hand, dick. This makes me feel fabulous. Just for good measure. Do you finally have it? Yes. Now the spell spot a cast will be broken. He's already beaten your boss fight. Let's save it for later. Plus, he doesn't look very good. I'll take the quick way down. There's our Devil Trigger. Designed by Kazuma Kaneko himself. Very cool. And that's the end of Devil May Cry 3. Dante is dead. Sad way to end, but, you know, it's a very fitting tale.
Almost got him, though. Whoa. Excuse me, sir. Alright. One of them's almost dead. Fuck! Damn it. I'm usually not this bad, I swear. <laughs> what the fuck is happening? These ones, instead of summoning lust, they will summon sloths. Which are better, I guess, but still not something I want to be dealing with. Oh god. Well, I'm gonna die. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> 